Hello everybody, it's a new video, a new Sublime text video. I call this one the basics, Sublime Tutor. Because, um, yeah, let's start with, with this, why not? Um, if you, you have probably heard that, if you want to learn Vim, you should use uh, Vim Tutor, which uh, I have installed Vim. And with uh, uh, Vim, I think you get Vim Tutor. Which is, if you run that, you will get a... a, a it opens a, a text file in Vim. And with instructions here so that you can follow to, to learn it quickly. Like for example here, how to exit Vim and, and things like that. And here it tells us about the X key. So use the X key, blah blah blah. Uh, whatever. Uh, there is uh, uh, one unofficial... Um, thing like that for Sublime and I thought let, let's make I guess it will be a couple of videos maybe um, uh, where we where I just walk you through this uh, Sublime tutor so we can look at the basic commands just so you know um, everything I think if, if, you, if you have used Sublime a bit then this will probably be uh, boring videos don't have to watch them but maybe I, I, I will also try to make it snappy uh, but you never know, sometimes I might uh, get stuck and, and talk a bit about my, my my opinions on some of the built-in commands and, and stuff. Because uh, after this we will start modifying and changing some of these basic uh, uh, default behaviors. Or I will do that in, in these videos to show you how, how I have set it up. But it can be really good to know... Um, uh, the default commands first. So we install uh, Sublime Tutor. Um, it tells us here that we can open it with Control Alt K. So if I hit that, it opens a new window. And here we can see a bunch of chapters. Uh, here it, the author tells us how this works. Blah blah blah. Uh, Control Alt. What symbols he uses here? Uh, that we can open it with Control Alt K. It's also some. So stuff about how to launch the application, whatever. The first feature you learn is go to anything shortcut. Use control P and I, I actually think this this tutor was where I learned this control P thing. So and you know when you hit control P I have shown you this myself in, in the first video I think it opens a list of all uh, files in the current project. And then it also tells us that we should enter one and choose Chapter 1. Give yourself a pat on the back. You just used the first keyboard shot shortcut. Great. This is probably the most frequently used command in Sublime Text. Maybe, maybe it's not. While a project is open you can use the blah blah blah. Let's give it another try. But What is this? Press Ctrl P. Um, type C1RB and press return. Okay, control P, C, 1, R, B. And you see here we get an example of this fuzzy matching that it uh, selects this uh, chapter even when we type it like this. It understands we want this. Uh, if you follow the instructions from chapter 1 of this tutorial correctly, you have reached here. Yep, uh, that means you have successfully executed go to anything command. There are a couple of modifiers to go to anything command that we are going to try try out in this unit go to symbol press ctrl r uh, to get a list of symbols in the current file type f to filter the class definition from the list of symbols press return to go to foo class okay uh, type f press return take take me to the foo class <coughs> rename the class from foo to bar okay uh, now press Ctrl R again and go to definiti definition bar 1. Ctrl R uh, bar 1. Yeah, it takes us here. And I guess it's selected here, so I can just. Yeah. Uh, now press bar 1. Rename the method from bar 1 to bar underscore 1. Okay. Uh, press Ctrl R again and go to the definition of bar 2. Rename that definition bar underscore 2. 
underscore two. So you saw there uh, symbols. It can be different things depending on the syntax. Uh, we are now in a Ruby file, uh, and the class a, a class definition is one symbol, and also a method uh, uh, definition is another type of symbols. It's often like functions and methods and classes are often uh, available in this control R menu by default. Go to line number. Control G. Uh, gives you go to line number palette uh, type the number 23 press return and it takes us here to reach this line well this is line 35 but whatever now change the quoted word to bar one okay uh, it meant, meant it like that okay type the number 27 and press return to reach this line well uh, th that will not work since we are here I guess it means this 27 um, now change the quota word to bar underscore 2 okay move to the next chapter press control P go to anything palette type C 2 M D and press return C C 2 M D M D Yeah, okay. Chapter 2. Editing text. In this module we learn uh, some important quick editing actions supported by Sublime Text. This would include indenting blocks, inserting lines, deleting words, uppercase, lowercase transformation, bubbling lines up and down, joining lines and much more. Fasten your bells. This is going to be an interesting module. Yeah, I bet. Let's move to the first unit, uh, press Ctrl P, go to anything, C21. Pro tip, go to anything, does fuzzy matching with the, the file names when you start typing. In the case above you could also type 21, chap 21 and the result would be the same, whatever. Insert line before and after. You can directly add a new line uh, above or below below the your cursor position and move your cursor directly to that location insert line before control shift return insert line after control return exercise place the cursor anywhere on the line marked with bling 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 uh, in the first block below insert a line before uh, and after using the control shift uh, return and control return uh, cons uh, consecutively do the same thing with other blocks as well. Each block uh, should now look as the block below. Bling blam bloom. Okay, so here we want the line after, so control and return. And notice that I can have the cursor anywhere uh, to, to, to do this. And then we want a line uh, in between here. Then I can do control shift return that will insert a line above this, this line. Like that. Easy peasy. Um, what is this? Does it want me to do this everywhere? Oh, it's so fun. Such fun. But this is good. It, it might look silly, but just doing this a couple of times like this, it, it kind of wires it in, into your brain uh, in, a, in a way. Um, so, so do this. And it, it's the same concept with... with um, Vim Tutor. It's very simple, stupid exercises like this, but just hitting the key commands is very different from just reading it in, in on a web page. Uh, duplicate line. Control Shift D. Put a cursor anywhere on a line and use this shortcut to create duplicate copy of the line. If something is selected, then instead of the line, uh, selection is copied over. In the block given below, place your cursor on the first sentence in the block and then use the shortcut to duplicate that line. Do it for all lines in the block, okay? Control Shift D, duplicated. 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 And this is uh, one of, the, I would say this is the most used uh, uh, shortcut. Duplicate line and commenting lines. That's the commands I use the most at least Because often you code something and then you want to comment one line out uh, Try something. Okay, it didn't work. You delete uh, that line and uh, 
Oops, comment, comment the other one out like that. Whatever. Go to chapter 211. Indent. Control right bracket, control left bracket. These shortcuts indent, unindent the selected text. If no content is selected, then the current line is moved. Um, there are multiple lines in the um, given block given below. Each line is intended at a different level. Use the shortcut learned above so that all lines start at column 4. There are two ways to do it. Indent every line individually except, except for 8 and 9 and 10. Um, for 8, 9, 10 select all three of them and press blah blah blah. Another way w that would be quicker, select the whole block and now use unindent command until all statements are indented uh, at the first column. Now indent control blah 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 twice to make the whole block at uh, column 4. And here the indentation, you can set uh, the, how, how big you want it here. Uh, if you want to indent with tabs or spaces and the, the number of spaces each indentation should be. Now it's set to 2 here. Uh, <clears throat> so let's try the first method first. Indent every line individually except 8, 9 and 10 because those are... These are at column, column 15, I don't know. At a different layer, use a shortcut line column 4. Indent every line individually. This doesn't make sense because this is not line number 4. But I guess we could do this. And then we could do this. Yeah, indent everything in individually. Or as uh, the other method, he said we could do this. Re-indent everything and then and then twice and now everything is at uh, uh, 4. There is actually a third way, I guess uh, uh, it will come up here in the tutorial soon, but there are uh, multiple cur cursors you can use. So we could do this, 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 and then bling 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 bling. Now it's also at 4. This was actually slower, but sometimes it's, it, this is really nice to be able to, to kind of uh, walk through the code like that with, with the multiple cursors. Uh, see if you can find more text to indent outside this project. Yeah, I, I bet I can. Try it with your uh, own code blocks. With that, uh, we just found a friend that will stay with us for long. Okay. You can also indent and re-indent with the tab key by default. Uh, tab, shift tab, tab, shift tab. But that can be a bit tricky because sometimes the tab key have different... Now, for example, when the text was selected, it uh, inserted a tab, but selected and control bracket, always indent. So I always use this control bracket way and, and, and use the tab key for other things. We will, uh, I will show you in a later video. Let's go to the next. I will use this sidebar here now instead. Comment, uncomment. I just show you that. Control slash, exercise. These are HTML comments. Can uncomment them? No. Uncomment doesn't work for some reason. Uh, whatever. Control slash, that's the comment uh, key binding. And it all depends on the syntax. Yeah, I have touched upon this in a previous video. Control slash, very, very useful though. As this uh, closing an HTML tag. As this shortcut is specific to HTML tags, if you don't write H HTML regularly, you can probably skip this unit. Uh, let's skip this unit, because who wants to write a HTML, right? Rep lines at ruler position. This is something that I just started to uh, realize that it's very, very useful. This shortcut was mighty useful when I was writing this series of tutorial. I generally like to wrap paragraphs at uh, 80 characters ruler limit. Personally, uh, Budrich, I uh, like to wrap at 50. So I write, the, write paragraphs with long sentences and later apply this shortcut to wrap them at column 80. Given below uh, is a very long line without any line, new line character. Select the block first, uh, use Alt-Q uh, on this block, automatically get, get it wrapped. 
and it might look here like it's uh, multiple lines but it's actually just one line this all of these are at one line because there are uh, word wrap applied to this uh, markdown sy syntax let's see if we maybe can or whatever but it's uh, uh, it's it's wrapping this but it is actually one line you can see it on the line numbers so if i uh, press alt q here then it uh, uh, wraps the text uh, for us. Very very nice when you're writing normal text like markdown documents and stuff. Not good at all when you're uh, writing programs and code. But it's very useful and sometimes and also uh, he, he doesn't say that here but if you wrap a comment then uh, uh, the next line will also be commented so it, it, it works really well with comments as well. And uh, it wraps at this ruler here, which is, uh, uh, and, and that is in this document, I guess, at uh, column 80. But you can set uh, where you want this ruler to, to be in the document. Transpose letters. Never use this one, but you can transpose letters uh, with control T. And that means uh, that, uh, let's see how this works. Yeah. It switches place uh, of, of, of the letters on, on each side of the cursor. So, can be useful. And here is some repetition of what we shortcuts you learned in this module. No, there are lots here that we haven't done. Did I miss something? Whatever. Here it says that we can do lowercase control K plus control L. This this is a weird thing with Sublime. It really likes to to make and this I never saw this delete line, but uh, control K and K. So control K and then K. Uh -huh. That deletes uh, to the end of the line. It's it's like a capital D in Vim. Delete the whole line. Control Shift K. Uh, cut a line, control X, that will cut it, so now I can paste it again. Uh, undo, control U, soft, redo, blah blah blah, lowercase, control K, control L, it made all the letters here, lowercase. Uh, control K, control U, no, control K, control, e. no. I have a blank uh, keyboard. I don't have any keys, and sometimes, especially when I when it's really important, I, I always press the wrong keys. Whatever you can do, uppercase also. Join two lines. This is very useful in my opinion. All and also, I never use this I, because I have vintage mode enabled, and then you just select something and press uh, uh, the tilde button to to switch uh, from lower to uppercase. That's what I use. Uh, join two lines, control J, very useful. Control J and then it uh, joins uh, the current line with the next one. Bubble line up, bubble line down. These are also very useful. Ah, now I see. Now I see. We missed here all this, two, three. I shouldn't have done this uh, uh, control P thing, whatever. Okay, but, but it's just good. We, let's just do uh, do these instead. Maybe we can do that and maybe we can go into some separate uh, chapters instead. Bubble the line up and down. Bubble line up, control shift up. That means you, you move the whole line. And this is very useful also. I have re remapped this in my personal uh, config. We will look at that. And bubble line down, control shift down. Very, very good. Sort lines, uh, never use this. I don't know what will happen here. Will it sort all, all the lines? Uh, F9. <laughs> yeah, you see, you, who use this? You know, well, it's not often that you need to do that. But maybe you can select and sort. Yeah, then it just sort uh, the selection. And that, that, that can be handy, actu actually. Never do that. Maybe I should uh, use it sometimes. Well. Whatever, sort lines case sensitive. Yeah, okay. Duplicate line, we did that. Indent, reindent, toggle comments. Close HTML tag, alt plus period. Uh, wrap lines at ruler position, alt Q and transpose control T. Yeah, so okay. And we can look here what we missed. Oh, we missed here, joining lines. We get this, right? Chapter tr three, selection. Selection is very important, and I guess this is where uh, he shows uh, multiple 
cursors and stuff because it's uh, kind of connected. Selection is one of the most powerful features of Sublime Text. It gives you a number of ways to select text in the easiest way possible. In this module we will build our skill set in multiple selections, column selection, different levels of selection on the word, line, block and scope. Once some text is selected you can do some advanced text editing operations on it. Let's move to the first unit, 3, 1. Okay, let's try to take them in order. Yeah, this is a good module, it's not like double numbers like here. Should have split this module up, so whatever. Multiple cursors. Uh, you can create multiple cursors uh, by holding control key and pressing the left button. In the list uh, given below, add an asterisk followed by space in the beginning of each uh, item. Use control click method for it. Uh, keep control key pressed and click uh, at the beginning of each list item to place the cursor there. Uh, when it's done, type bling. Okay, and also, th this is how it works, you know. Control, hold, holding control now, I can left click and I got multiple cursors here. But now, in this exercise, it wants us to put this uh, cursor at the beginning of the line here and just make an asterisk and a space. Multiple selection. Extending the same disc, uh, discussion around multiple cursor, uh, you can extend this trick to select text at multiple places. Press control uh, and drag select multiple blocks uh, of text in the document. You, once you are in multiple selection mode, you can also use the usual shift uh, up, down, left, right shortcuts to select blocks of text. In this list given below, drag the items with bling marked on them, now delete them and replace with three tildes. So, I guess I holding holding control, I never use this. I'm holding control now. And I'm just uh, dragging and selecting this. And as it uh, said, we can uh, use uh, shift and, and left to extend and, and change the uh, selection. Now let's uh, change this to three tildes. There. Once you perform, perform the exercise, the uh, block given above should look like this. Oh, it wanted me to change the whole... Uh, and then I can uh, do this dirt uh, uh, trick, hold shift and press home, that will select the whole line, and there. Yeah, looks good. That was good. You are already on the road of becoming a multiple selection expert in Sublime Text. Press escape uh, key anytime to switch back to a single selection mode anytime. Anytime, anytime. Anytime, man. Escape. Great. 3, 2. Column selection. If you want to have multiple cursors in a column, uh, then control plus click could become cumbersome pretty soon. For this, there is another convenient method that Sublime provides. Column selection using mouse, shift, right click and drag. Uh, keyboard shortcut, control alt up and control alt down. This is what I use all the time. I like this, but uh, you could do this method as well. We will look at both of them. For Linux users, this one is slightly different for you. Uh, keyboard shortcut, Alt Shift up, Alt Shift down. Yeah, but I have also remapped these to actually uh, Alt Shift K and Alt Shift J in command mode, so it's uh, more Vim-like. But whatever. Exercise following on from the exercise in chapter three one. Do the same thing uh, again, but this time use uh, column selection, uh, insert asterisk and space. Um, so uh, I guess we can just put put your cursor at the beginning of the word tab, okay? There and then Alt Shift down on Linux, and you see now it inserts uh, multiple cursors for me here. Thank you, Sublime. Great. Try these two shortcuts uh, uh, on your existing work now. Hey, I, I wanted to try this. Um, other one, shift, right click and drag. That's uh, actually quite cool. So if I hold shift uh, and right click and then I can drag and then you can make a selection like this. It's uh, th th This can be really, really good sometimes. 
and it's like uh, the, the, yeah whatever so shift and right click drag really cool control left click drag then you get uh, mul only multiple cursors wasn't it no you couldn't drag with that whatever 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 three split block of text uh, selection into multiple lines uh, this can be useful sometimes too. If you need a cursor on each line in a region, then Sublime Text provides uh, one more way of doing it. Drag select a region of text, then press Ctrl Shift L. So Ctrl Shift L. Yeah. Then we got uh, uh, one cursor on each line. Let's try this in practice by following uh, the same exercise from the previous unit. In the list given below, add an asterisk fun uh, drag select blonk, control shift L, press left arrow asterisk, asterisk asterisk, space great! It is all about practice. The more you set, use this command, the more comfortable you'll be the next time uh, with it. And this is something that I don't use often, but I can really see that it's useful. And I, I will actually try to, to get this into my workflow, I think. Control shift l multiple cursor at every line selected. Select word with multiple occurrences. And this is... This is uh, one of the top three most used uh, commands also in my opinion Control d select occurrence of this word press Control d multiple times for each occurrence so if i just have the cursor here on any word press Control d that will select that word if i press Control d again it will select the next occurrence and uh, also create uh, a cursor on each selection here and then i can change this if i want if I want. So control D, very, very, very useful. In the block given below, select all uh, the if I of, select all the if I of the word phone and, oh, maybe it was me who, whatever. Place your cursor uh, on the word phone, done. Press control D as many times as it it appears in the list. Bing, bing. Okay. Uh, once all of them are selected, delete them and uh, replace them with Android. Okay. Android. Great. Quick skip word. While you use Control D to select multiple occurrences of a word, uh, if there is a word that you don't want to select, use Control K followed by Control D. I, I hate these Control K uh, chains of commands. It's like. Ugh. But this is the default uh, they have. Uh, in the uh, block given below, uh, select all occurrences with the word phone. Select the word mouse, uh, it's now highlighted. Press Ctrl D as many times as this appear in the list. When phone in iPhone gets selected, skip it using Ctrl K, Ctrl D. Okay. Ctrl D, yes. Ctrl D, yes. Ctrl D. For some reason it didn't select iPhone here, uh, but sometimes it do. Maybe they have changed this or maybe I have some setting uh, enabled now so it doesn't uh, uh, select this. But let's do this again just to show you what this Control K, Control D is. Control D, Control D, no I don't want that selected. Control K, Control D, then it selects the next one and only these two will be edited. See how easy it is? Uh, word boundary, uh, yeah, here, here maybe they say initial words using this switches to matching from fuzzy matching to word boundary. So iPhone will not. Well, pro tip to mitigate the need to use to select the initial word using Control D. Ah, okay, it was because I selected it with the Control D from the start. Um, it says here, select the word with the mouse, then it uh, maybe uh, is different. The, yeah, now it's selected the iPhone, and we don't want that there. So, but uh, if you select it with uh, Control D, then it will know that it is that exact word you are looking for. So it's um, 
recommended, I guess, that you use Control D. If you want to select a line, use Control L as in line. Control L, great. Uh, in the block given below, select the line with uh, these. Use uh, the shortcut you learned in this chap chapter to do so. Once all four lines are selected, use Control U to soft undo this, then repeat the process four times. So Control L, and then you can press Control L again and it will select the next line. You can even see that the cursor jumps down to the next line when you press Control L. And then Control U, 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 L, 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 U, 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 L, U, L, U, L, L, U. Okay, so soft undo, that kind of undoes uh, soft things like a selection, you know, normally Control Z. That uh, I think that only uh, uh, redo the last uh, actual change to the text if, if you insert or delete something. But soft undo can also uh, uh, undo things like selection. Never use it really, but... Uh, while coding some stuff, it is generally a frequent requirement to select the content between a set of brackets. Sublime text make it really easy to do so. Shortcut, Control Shift M, um, place your cursor anywhere, and then Control Shift M. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it selected everything inside these parentheses. Let's see what happens here. Control Shift M, it selected everything between these braces. And if I place it here, Control Shift M, select everything between these braces, even the the parentheses and braces inside of it. So. You get it. Expand selection to intendation. If you want to select some text which is below uh, the same intendation level as this text, then you can use uh, the shortcut given below. Control sh Shift J. Use the command you learned in the unit to select the, the region which is intended at the 8th uh, level. I guess it's this. Uh, and unindent it once. So I guess they want me to control shift J. You see it selected everything on this intendation level. If we would do it here, control shift J. Uh, it selected everything from this and everything under it as well. And then you could adjust the intendation like that. You could do here, control shift J and then uh, re-indent these lines. And let's see what happens if I do control shift J again here then we're, this will get selected and so on. This can actually be very useful. I'm, I'm bad at using this too. I will add this also to my uh, notes of shortcuts. It, it feels good to do this. I, I rediscover some commands that I should use more often. 3.8. Expand selection to scope. Uh, I love this shortcut. This is super useful in a lot of conditions. The good part about this shortcut is that on every consecutive press it expands to the immediate parent scope. Put your cursor uh, at different places in the code below. Uh, try using Control shift space multiple times. The selection will increase on every consecutive keystroke. Uh, so, you can place uh, cursor here. Control shift space that selected everything within these brackets. If I press uh, control shift space again, now it selects the br uh, parentheses themselves. If I press space again while holding control and shift, it keeps on expanding the scope. And there it went here, and now it's here. So Sure, this might look really useful and good, but it's actually, in my opinion, a bit unpredictable. When, I, when I'm here, for example, and hit Control shift space I would rather uh, maybe select just a word here. Let's see what happens if I do select the word, word with Control shift or Control d and now Control shift space No, it selects everything. Wouldn't it be more logical to first select maybe a word, then maybe the whole line here, and or the whole paragraph between these tags and so on. I think this uh, this is too unpredictable for my taste to use, but there is actually a good package that uh, enhances this uh, function in Sublime so so it works better in at least in my opinion. Control shift space, control shift space, control shift space. Whoa, space, space. 
now everything is selected almost whatever this marks the end of this module cool for navigation we had a brief introduction uh, to go to anything command in the first module um, let's start with refreshing our memory with the shortcuts that we studied in the first module control p that is open file uh, search files within the currently open project control g that is uh, go to line and control r is go to symbol which was uh, you know that ruby file we had open uh, go to a function class definition and so on search symbol in project and then you can do this also control shift r that will search for symbols within the whole project like control p that searches files and control r that searches for functions and stuff in inside um, a file but control shift r that searches for symbols uh, all across the whole uh, project now if i would select something here i think we will go to that uh, ruby file for example bar 2 here yeah, now it takes us to that Ruby file. So th this can also be really, really useful. But I very seldom use that myself. Uh, 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 okay. 4.2. Go to definition. This is also very, very useful. I don't use it so much because I'm a bash person. So it doesn't really work, work so well with that. But uh, this takes you... You can be in one file... Press F12 and that will take you to the definition that defined, for example, that class or that uh, uh, method or something. So here, this should take us to that Ruby file, I think, if I press F12 here. Yeah, it goes directly to that. Uh, it can be a, a completely different file in, in your project. Very, very useful when you're working with object-oriented languages with a lot of uh, class files and stuff. Um, so that's good to know f12 and it's usually the same key binding i think it's the same key binding in visual uh, studio code and, and even visual studio i think have this it's often on f12 for some reason go to beginning of line shortcut cut home i think this you should just know this you know it's basic basic text navigation works in this even works in in uh, notepad you know and go to end of line end and uh, move cursor to what is this Ooh, i'm learning i'm learning and you can of course hold the uh, shift and then it will select to the end of the of the line whatever go to matching bracket control m never used this but i guess it works uh control m control m m m m m m and if i want to um, 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 um. This can be useful. Never used this myself, but maybe I should use it more. Uh, it's a good way just to find the brackets and to see if they are uh, at the correct place. I know what you did last summer. No, you don't. While undo and soft undo functionalities are great, uh, they are only limited to the view you are working with. What if you want to see your cursor movement movement across the tabs? With this, never use this. Jump back in history. Alt plus minus. Jump forward in history. Alt shift plus minus. Alt plus, I guess. So alt uh, minus minus minus. Huh. So th this. This is quite cool. You can kind of rewind your workflow across tabs and files and everything. I don't know what will happen if I would save and close a tab there. I guess that works too. Interesting. Never use it myself though. But maybe I should. Code folding. This is something I never use either. When I really need to fold something, I do it from these arrows in this. This is called the gutter between the line numbers and, and the document itself. They're can be symbols there sometimes so you can fold code like this and this is actually something that i just prefer to do with the mouse but you can do it with the control shift uh, bracket uh, hotkeys as well so control shift bracket here no here there control shift bracket and right bracket left bracket right bracket left bracket. and you can fold at different levels 
I don't know. I don't use folding so much. I, 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 I want to see all my code. It's very, very seldom that I would like to do this. But there are uh, occasions when it can be good. Find and replace. Is that the last module? Man, moving quickly. It's uh, only this left. Sublime Text provides you multiple ways to find text block. Depending upon the situation condition, one or the other method could be used. You can consider them as different find modes with slightly different UI flavor. In this module, we'll be learning more about these methods. Okay, find. The most basic way of finding a word in Sublime Text is just double clicking it. Okay, it selects the word. Yeah, and then you can see here all, all the other occurrences in, in the current visible buffer here. Uh, once you click somewhere else, you exit the search mode as well. For more advanced cases, uh, we, could, uh, we would like to open the Find panel. Find Control F. Boom. For, brings up this guy. And here we can search for most. Finds us that. F3. Next. Only one occurrence of most. Word. F3. Cycles between them. F3. Shift F3. Uh, backwards. Search. Alt F3. This is actually very useful. Something I, I never used this F3 that I have actually rebound because I use VI navigation and VI find methods. So I use N instead. instead. But Alt F3 I still uh, use. And that is... Select everything or Alt Return when find, find Panel is open. So I guess that means oh, Alt Return. Boom. Never used that either, but uh, that's good to know also. So Alt F3, find all uh, occurrences of a word. And this is good. Sometimes you have a very large file, maybe you have a variable name that you... Why did I name this variable? Budridge, extremely cool variable. You select that, hit Alt F3 and then uh, you can replace it at every occurrence, you know, without even seeing the word. So, uh, word. Let's see, we probably change some word down here. There. So you change, uh, that, that's an easy way to, to find and replace uh, stuff, you know. Alt F3, uh, that, that's what you should take away from this. And here we can practice this searching for uh, use selection to find. Control E, this command puts the selection or the word in which uh, the cursor is pointing into the find buffer. I, he describes this in a weird way. But this is actually called slurping, what he's uh, uh, describing here. So if I press Control E instead of Control F, uh, then we could see here copied find string from buffer. I don't know. Probably no. Control E, no. Control F. Ah, we need to have the panel open. But th this is how it works. If I press Ctrl E here with the cursor on when, it looks like nothing happened. But if I open the find panel with Ctrl F, we can see that when is uh, slurped into it. So you can do this Ctrl E, Ctrl E, Ctrl E to easily change word. You could of course select a lot of stuff Ctrl E and it will uh, slurp it into the find panel. I, I have made a combination of this to automatically slurp words. Uh, if the find panel isn't visible. I will show you in a later video. That's why I wanted to make this uh, short run through this uh, uh, tutorial so you know what this is about when I start saying, hey, let's change the slurp, <laughs> the default slurp uh, way, you know, when it's better to show you how it works by default. Incremental find. I would rather skip this chapter as I personally personally believe it only adds to confusion and the find panel can be better used in place of this. Uh, I think I really agree with this. Uh, I never use this. Uh, incremental find. Control I. Pressing it again would find next. Incremental find previously. Uh, control Shift I. 
these commands works exactly as uh, find. So let's do control I and then V. Yeah, I guess this is like it, it, it finds as I type here, as you, uh, as you can see. Whatever, and control F, then it doesn't uh, search till I hit enter. So in one way, maybe control I is, I don't know, it's not that confuse, confusing. Uh, I, 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 I use the normal find most of the time. But whatever. Find is incomplete without replace and vice versa. Uh, there would always be cases when you would want to search for a specific term and get it replaced with some other term. In such case, this shortcut uh, would come in handy. Replace panel, control H, uh, and replace next, uh, control shift H, replace all, control alt return. But this only works when this panel is visible. Uh, you have a long string with 10 underscores below. Use the find uh, replace panel to replace it with an empty string. So let's find that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we replace it with empty string. Uh, okay, how did we replace now? Replace next. Control Shift H. I don't know. Enter. No. Control Shift H, then it replaces. So enter that that is like find next, and this is why I I actually like this replace panel because you can do all the searching and and, and stuff that you can do with a normal panel, but you just get this extra field and some extra functionality, and you can search next with and with just hitting enter like this, or return, and. Uh, so I, uh, that's another sh thing I have changed. I never bring up the normal uh, default search field. I always bring up the, the, the replace field and I auto slurp text into it, but getting ahead of myself. Use uh, selection for replace. Uh, yeah, here, here they do that. So you can do a control shift, shift E that will slurp into the re replace field. I never do this, It's it, that's too, too much you know but maybe it, you can get this into your workflow and and be be efficient with it i i never do it you can combine it of course with control d to slurp things and whatever quick find what if you don't want to open the search panel but up but want to search for the currently selected term uh, in the document with just one keystroke these cases happen to me quite common in software development. This command does exactly that. Control F F3. I never use this, but the, I feel this is something that I could uh, be using. It looks really, really useful. Uh, in the lists, uh, put the cursor on phone and then use shortcut Control F3 to cycle through all other occurrences of this word. So, okay, place it here. Control F3. Yeah, this is really good because it cycles through without selecting because I usually do this to find the next occurrence. But then I get the selection on every word. This, yeah, this is something I need to get in my workflow. And I actually think there is already a, a, a Vim binding that uh, you get in effect when you enable vintage mode that does this. Uh, yeah, this is something I really need to, to get. So control F3. Quick find previous, yeah, control shift F3. Uh, quick find all, alt F3. We, we already did that, you know. And the, the, this one is, is a personal, this one is, is a must. Uh, very, very useful. Control D and control uh, or and alt F3. And both of them together, very, very good. Find in project. Uh, if you blah 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 blah, this is equivalent to grab command of the shell world. No, it's not really, but whatever. Control Shift F. This brings up a different uh, find panel, and here you can search for files inside uh, your project or any uh, uh, directory. Actually, you could, you, you could enter any any directory here. Press Control Shift F uh, to open Find in Project Panel. Uh, in the Find field, uh, type class foo. Class foo. Press Return. 
searching 44 files you see this is incredibly fast sublime with searching multiple files like this and it actually only finds uh, the file that we were looking in since we, we I, I think we renamed class foo in, in that uh, Ruby script and then if I'm not mistaken you should be able to enter this is it no uh, and press return quick quick tip control E control can be used Yeah, I thought there were a way to enter, to, to just go to that file in this control, but whatever. Uh, try this uh, with four, five different... Yeah, let's try something more common, like Word, for example. Now it finds much more, uh, many more uh, results here in different files, sometimes several times in one file as here, and then it just shows the the... the interesting lines and it shows both the line where, where the occurrence uh, was found uh, but also a couple of more lines just so you can get the context of, of, of the search this is incredibly powerful and useful finding files and I use this all the time it's very very good one of the biggest strengths uh, and advantages of with sublime in my opinion we have now reached uh, blue, 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 chapter 6, last page here, other commands, sublime text settings, uh, whatever, we have, we have talked so much about settings, python console, interesting, control backtick, you know, then you get the console, control backtick again to hide it, but you can al always press escape to hide any panel, the, I press escape now, it will hide the find panel also. You can do that even if the find panel isn't active, I can press escape, it will hide uh, panels like that. Uh, types so here, this is a very, very, very useful thing. I haven't shown you this, but uh, open the console and then paste this sublime.log underscore commands true. Hmm didn't work something there shouldn't be a capital S uh, typo here so now when uh, you enter this command then every command you do you see when I just click here that is a command that is sent to the editor if I select text control C just normal then it's a command copy uh, control J join lines you know and this is a very good way to find out uh, the name of a command if you want to make your custom key bindings and stuff instead of going into the key map file try to find it or the command the menu files as we have done before you can just uh, uh, execute the commands that you know uh, and look at uh, the output here but you have to remember this sublime.log commands true I think I have it somewhere in my budlime project uh, in, in the wiki uh, this is extremely useful uh, command palette uh, control shift p exercise find commands whatever conclusion good job man i i actually think this is very good i, I really recommend you you going through this uh, tutorial we did it here now quite quickly we didn't do all the exercises but i highly recommend you do just to to get your fingers and and executing the commands and this is something you saw me now, I, I discovered a couple of commands that I more or less had forgot uh, that I now found useful. I probably didn't understand how useful they would be the first time I did this and, and things like that, you know. So I really recommend you, you doing this. Uh, and you could, I have else ac actually made my own version of this uh, that I call Bud Tutor that I haven't published uh, really. And it was a long, it's almost a year ago when I work, worked on that. Where, where I changed and added all my personal key bindings and the VI key bindings, I actually combined it with the Vim tutor. I copied the whole Vim tutor and pasted that in here as well because I used the vintage mode and stuff like that. But hopefully, you have seen a bit uh, about uh, what you can do with Sublime and the default uh, key uh, commands and navigations. And uh, just install this but, uh, uh, Sublime tutor if you want to try it out. It's not like 
It's just a normal guy who have done this, you know, and he have put a lot of effort into writing all of these guides. I think it's great. I think it's great. So, we'll see what we cover in the next video. I say thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye, 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 bye.